Shalom, shalom. First of all, most I'm going to get out on that glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, the fact that that's the honors to the apostles and the elders, a great millstone. We would have been a great example to the younger brothers of the truth and peace and blessing to the hopeful elite. And Lord willing, it's edifying. And man, we entering into the times of great trouble, man, because America is a sinking ship, <laughs> circling the drain, you know. Uh, a burning building, whatever you want to call it, and we in the middle of the building, man. We in, we on the ship, you know. We circling the drain. <laughs> we ain't, but America is, man. And you know, and these people of this world, they gonna they gonna go down right along with this place, man. You know, that's why the Lord told us come up, come out of her, my people. I mean, well, you know, I'll say the depart from her and let me grab the scripture spiritually depart is what I'm trying to get at let me try to get it I, believe that. I wish I had my bible I could get to it quick This is Micah chapter 2 and verse 10. And it's wrong. Give me a minute. I ain't got no precept. It say, Arise ye and depart. For this is not your risk, because it is polluted, and it shall destroy you, even with the sword of destruction. Yeah, and this place is not our risk, man. <laughs> and soon the people that are seems to be comfortable and resting and living it up and having, you know, enjoying their lives in this place, are gonna soon be discomforted, man, because this place is over with. Man. America is done. America don't got another twenty-five years, and America don't got another ten years. Especially using the, the 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 dollar currency, you know, going about as as it, you know, with twenty twenty eighteen or something, man. No, the economy is gonna crash. The dollar is gonna crash rather, and that's what this video is about. Going into bank billions, or oh, going into these bank billions that's about to occur in Babylon, man. You know, but I'm a um. I'm going to get into it. I ain't going to prolong it. I'm going to let the video play. But if I ain't say it, I'm going to get all on and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah Bahasham, Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of the great millstone rule with. Being a great example to his younger brothers and the truth and peace and blessing to the hope we live. Lord, when this edify. A new article, financial analyst Doug Casey argues that if that actually happens, the Fed won't be able to insure all of these deposits. It would likely have to create more Let me see. Let me go back a little more. on sen on the dollar. And the fact that the Fed has controlled capital flow shows that there's little money left. So what happens when one of the biggest banks in the U.S. goes down? So like if, but another thing, go, go watch this video yourself man you know watch the whole video and, but i'm gonna just start right here i ain't gonna play the whole video 16 minute long video i'm just start right here but go watch the video from the front all the way to the back you know in theory you would be entitled to up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars. however there's no way to make up for any money you've lost on top of that amount and the promise that the central bank will cover up potential money losses you may suffer in a private banking institution looks sketchy at best. In a new article, financial analyst Doug Casey argues that if that actually happens, the Fed won't be able to insure all of these deposits. It would likely have to create more artificial currency to make up for the losses. I'll be surprised if the FDIC doesn't go bust and need to be recapitalized by the government. That money, many billions, will likely be created out of thin air by selling treasury debt to the Fed, he highlighted. On top of that, 
the government has been using banks as a lending tool. Over the years, it has enforced and promoted U.S. banks to give out loans to help. Yeah, and that's part of the curses. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt, um, uh, oh, let me grab it. And the curses. You know, this man lends. We, we are the borrowers. The borrow is subject to the lender. Let me get that too. And this raw, I ain't, there's just some of these coming to my mind as a, through the spirit and probably how about some, how shy as I'm doing this. Like it. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, and verse 7. It says, The rich ruleth over the poor, and the po and the borrower is servant to the lender. So who are the who are the lenders in this in this country, uh, in this world? The bankers, the international bankers, the these Edomites, these so called white people, the Edomites. They they are the Edomites, which are so called white people. The Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, you know, the, 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 the uh, different families, you know, the different banking families, different Edomite, upper echelon Edomite families, man. You know, they, they lend, and then not only do they lend, but when they lend, they charge usury. That's why they got what you call interest rates. And the interest rate shit is set up to keep you at the bottom, man, ultimately. Keep you paying bills for the rest of your life, ultimately. And then they give you crazy interest rates. See, they give Jake crazy interest rates. Then these Edomites, they interest rates be better than ours. You know, for the most part, you know. That's what I was going to look at. Do the running Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23, and verse 19. The reason it's one of the laws. This um, Deuteronomy 23, and verse 19, it says, Thou shalt not lend upon usury. And that's what an interest rate is. Like if you get somebody something. And you put an interest rate on it. That's using usury. It say, "Thou shalt not lend upon usury to thy brother." And Esau always holler about, "Oh, we brothers? Nah, we ain't no fucking brothers, man. You've been broke that brotherly covenant. <laughs> you know, you charge us usury, which is going off. And these people supposed to be these devout Christians. You know, we brothers. We." Everybody of one big happy family, but you charging your one big happy family usury, man. You know, it say thou shalt not lend upon usury to thy brother. Usury of money, usury of victuals, and victuals of a necessity, so to speak, and usury of anything that is lent upon usury unto a stranger thou mayest lend upon usury so the other nations and it is just a law for our people you know this is this is a a, a law for you so-called negro latinos and native americans which we are the the hebrew israelites that the bible speak of you know these laws are given unto us we don't supposed to 
Like if a brother come to you and ask you to borrow a hundred dollars and you got the hundred dollars but you want your money back, so to speak, you don't charge him user, you don't give him a hundred dollars or fifty dollars and tell him, Okay, I gave you fifty dollars, I want seventy five back. Uh I gave you a hundred dollars, I want uh uh, uh one twenty five back or uh, one fifty back. Uh, a 200 back. That's usury. You know, you don't do that to a man of your own nation. Let me get this one last one at all. Do the right of the 28th. I'm going to have to find it. I don't know exactly where it is. Do the right of the 28th. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt and thou shalt come down very low. He shall lend unto thee, and thou shalt not lend and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. Moreover, all these curses, and that was the point, you know. That was the point right there. You know, we amongst these nations, all nations, all these nations are above us, man. You know, they have surpassed us due to the curses, man. You know, because these nations are in cahoots with the devil, Esau and Edom, and they know who we are. And they've gotten above us very high. You know, but it's all good. <clears throat> and they charge us usury, interest, you know. They overcharge us for things. You know, let me get that. Let's get this one last one. We're going to keep moving. A false balance. That said the Lord is Proverbs chapter 1, I mean 11 and verse 1. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. Um... When pride, uh, that's pretty much the point. You know, a false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. Yeah. So a false balance would be motherfuckers, these motherfuckers will sell you something that's not worth, it's not really worth it, you know. A false balance. You go buy a house or a car and, and they overcharge you for the shit. Then give you a crazy interest rate as, as well. You know? So, these devils got to pay for a lot of things, man. They sins are reaching up to heaven. The Lord finna destroy America, Babylon, the great, because this is a abominable place, man. You know? The mother of harlots. <laughs> and, now, and the whole earth operate off this, you know, this wicked vibration, man. Under the rule of these Edomites. Why? Because they are the, the devil that the Bible speak of. They are Satan. They are the adversaries of our Lord. Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Sai. You know. Businesses. But now that the country is moving towards a deep and protracted recession, many of those loans are either going bad or will go bad soon, adding more pressure on United States banks. When borrowers cannot return loans to the banks, these institutions no longer have the same coverage as they once did. In case of a surge in the number of borrowers defaulting on bank loans continues to increase, banks will have a huge problem on their hands. However, at the end of the day... And borrowers represent people who get car loans and things of that nature and can't pay them, you know. Or, or things go south or whatever. You know, that's who the borrowers are, are borrowing things from these people and, and can't pay it. The everyday common person, we are the borrowers. And the lenders are these international bankers. Even you Edomites are borrowers, man. Borrowers in your own kingdom. The average American would be the one paying for these souring loans. This may come as a surprise for many people out there, but you won't actually own the money in your bank account. 
Yeah, and that's the point. And that's why you're going to get into the bank bail in. Because they the money that you have, that you storing in your bank account, that you putting in your bank account, they're going to be confiscating it, so to speak, just like they did in the with the Bank of America situation with people checking their accounts and missing thousands, $1,000 or, you know, different money was missing out their account. That's called considered a bank bail in, man. Because once that money in the bank, it's not yours, man. <laughs> you know, it, it, they say it's yours. It's an illusion that it's yours. If you got a hundred thousand dollars in the bank. That's not your money. They giving that. They they passing that money around. There's another video that surfaced in like 2021. You know, a uh, soldier boy, a rapper, went and tried to get um some money out the bank, <laughs> and they only gave him like. He was trying to get a hundred thousand or something out, and they only gave him like thirty thousand or some shit like that, you know. Because they don't have the money, man. You putting money in there, and they distributing it out. They giving it out to people for loans to get cars, houses, start up businesses, and all these different things. And the people who getting these different things, some people can pay it back, but majority of the people are uh, late on paying it and. You know, and it's catching up <laughs> because, hey, this place is done, man. The the middle class, the everyday common working people are suffering, man. Truly, truth be told, due to inflation, you know, due to, you know, gas, well, inflation, you know, different things of that nature, you know. Once you deposit money at the bank, it's no longer your property. It's the bank's. What you bank. own... So putting your money as a bank is a, is a foolish thing, man. If you have five thousand dollars and you put five thousand dollars in the bank, that's a dumbass move, man. You know, that's that's a dumb move. If you you got ten thousand dollars and you put the whole ten thousand in the bank, you just gave them your money. Fuck that. Find you a little stash back. You keep your own money, man. You know. You don't want to put all your eggs in one nest, man, <laughs> so to speak. You you put a little bit of money in the bank. Say you got a couple thousand, a, a couple hundred. You keep, hell, just keep the money in the bank that you need to pay bills with, man. You know how bills, that's all you need in there to pay a bill with. You don't want to keep all your money in these fucking institutions, man. <laughs> that's their money when you put it in there, man. You know, that's why they have, uh, I think it's called the Black Swan event, where they had a run on the banks, you know, and people try to go get their money and they just close the bank down, you know. Promise from the bank to repay you. It's an unsecured liability. Technically, you're a creditor of the bank. And that means a bank bail-in would probably wipe you out. A bail-in is when a bank recapitalizes itself by tapping its creditors. That includes all of its average Joe depositors. As the current economic downturn accelerates, millions of Americans are about to find this out the hard way. Just a couple of weeks ago, the chief marketing analyst at ITM Trading, Lynette Zhang, came forward to warn the public that banks can legally confiscate their clients' money in the event it needs to stay afloat. And most retailers... Banks can legally confiscate their money. They, um, uh... Let me rewind. Millions of Americans are about to find this out the hard way. Just a couple of weeks ago, the chief marketing analyst at ITM Trading, Lynette Zhang, came forward to warn the public that banks can legally confiscate their clients' money in the event it needs to stay afloat. They can legally clients, uh, confiscate clients' money and, and need to stay afloat. That's why it would be, be very wise to start, you know, if you do have money in the bank, get your money up out of that motherfucker, man. You know, because these things are getting ready to happen, man. They're getting ready to... <laughs> all the money people got in the bank, they're getting ready to take that. You know, not everything probably, but they're going to be hitting it, you know, so to speak. You got 20000 now you wake up and it's only ten. you know. 
most retail investors are not aware of this. What's even more chilling is that behind the scenes, they know a collapse is Let me read what it say. It say your bank can legally confiscate your money. It is too late to stop the great reset in CBDCs. Lynette Zing. I need to go watch this video. And most retail investors are not aware of this. What's even more chilling is that behind the scenes, they know a collapse is coming and they're already preparing for a major crisis, all while promising the public. It say analysts warns of banks of banks authority to confiscate funds decline of US purchasing power. <laughs> the dollar is crashing. There. Hey man, this place thing man. Hey, and all roads lead to to what GMS said. <laughs> start I mean start with the possible. Our roads lead to what you have by saying you have a said. Let's get it right. You know, our roads lead to what the word said. But who is putting the correct message out on what the MOTB is and these different things are? The men are a, a great millstone, man. So all roads lead to the um. All roads lead to the um. The, the implantable microchip under the skin, you know. CBDC, central bank digital currency, and that CBDC ain't just gonna be no CB. No, they gonna put that shit in they in they implantable microchip man and they want to put it up in you man they want to uh 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 pierce your your flesh man that everything is under control according to the new york times big banks are setting aside billions as they brace for a downturn since 2008 banks have kept more cash on hand to defend themselves against a crisis. However, in December, the Financial Stability Board estimated that the average exposure to leveraged loans and collateralized loan obligations, or CLOs, for the 30 safest US banks was around 60% of capital on hand. CLOs account for more than 100% of the capital of small banks. If the leveraged loan market collapses, their liabilities may swiftly exceed their assets. Simply put, they will seize your money to rebuild their assets and prevent the institution from collapsing. So you want to know where to invest a thousand dollars right now? Well, forget about stocks, real estate, or cryptocurrency. Many businesses struggling. The U.S. banking system can become insolvent very rapidly. Policymakers know how bad the problem is. That's why they urgently passed new bail-in rules last year. Such legislation is already codified in the Dodd-Frank Act, Zhang revealed. The executive, who has decades of experience in the financial sector and worked as an investment banker at Larson Lehman American Express, said that these bail-ins could be part of a bigger systemic monetary reset. She explained that Bail-ins allow banks to convert debt into equity to increase who has decades Listen closely. of experience in the financial sector and worked as an investment banker at Larson Lehman American Express, said that these bail-ins could be part of a bigger systemic monetary reset. These bail-ins could be part of a bigger, however he said it, monetary systemic monetary reset. Going into what? The Great Reset. The MOT to the B, man. You know, our roads lead. <laughs> oh, man. Our road leads to Revelation 16, uh, 13 and 16 being the implantable uh, microchip, man. Not sin. You know, not sleeping with white women. You know, not being a part of this man's military. Not embargoes. None of that. It's the it is the implantable mic the implantable microchip. That's what the you know Revelation 16 is talking about. She explained that bail. I mean Revelation 13 and 16 is talking about. Ends allow banks to convert debt into equity to increase their capital requirements, and the Dodd Frank Act replaces bailouts with bail-ins in which depositors' funds can be used to rescue a failing bank. 
In the incoming financial crisis, practically every bank is going to be bailed in, Zhang forecasts. They've printed so much money, and yet we're having problems with liquidity. Practically every bank is going to be bailed in. So all these people with savings accounts and, you know, 401ks and all this money in the bank, <laughs> they get ready to get hit across the head and and, and that's gonna cut people gonna what people gonna act a fucking fool that way you're gonna see a motherfucker in, in america in the street when you play with their money man <laughs> you take these niggas money man and i'm talking about edomites and everybody else man. i ain't just talking about black people you take these people's money they're gonna be turnt they're gonna be livid in all of the markets, but particularly the U.S. Treasury market, which underpins global markets. She added that, based on recent meetings, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, FDIC, is aware that there could be a major issue in the U.S. financial system and is openly discussing the likelihood of implementing bail-ins. There are discussions and deliberations over whether making retail bankers explicitly aware of the legal bail-in stipulations would create panic and exacerbate the potential problem. They're laughing at us, she said. They're saying that normal retail clients don't need to understand that there's really no money in the FDIC deposit insurance fund. Moreover, Zhang outlines that after the wipeout occurs, central banks are likely to impose central bank digital currencies, or CBDCs, programmable forms of fiat money, which allow central banks to track... To and what they gonna program the, those money, that money to, that, 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 um, that implantable microchip, man. And where they gonna stick it at? Wherever they want. Wherever you want it, they gonna put it. You want it in your butt, they're going to put it in your butt. You want it in your hand, that's where it's going. I'm just playing. But they're going to put it in your right hand and your forehead, man. And in your forehead. Trace and even to freeze a person's funds. This, along with de-dollarization and the digitization of hard assets, will be part of the Great Reset, Zhang warns. Huh. The World Economic Forum says you will have nothing and be... Yeah, and the people that's running the world, they ain't talking about causing nobody to sin. Yeah, you know, we're going to make you motherfuckers. The pork will be made mandatory. You can't eat beef. You can only eat pork. Uh, you can't uh, wear 100% uh, cotton, 100% linen. You got to wear mixed fabrics. Yeah. That, that's not what's coming upon the earth, man. What's coming upon the earth is the Great Reset and digital and digital currency and things of that nature. That's what's coming to the earth, not what what these people talk about. Not what these people, not what these niggas, <laughs> what the Israelites who bucking up against uh, bucking up against Yahweh and Yahweh and Yahweh and talking about, man. You know, because that's who they bucking up against. They not bucking up against GMS. They bucking up against the word, man. They offended at the word. You know, it, it, these the WEF ain't, ain't talking about ways on how how can we make these people uh, a commit, which, you know, they got they, they, they Illuminati and these different rappers and, you know, they got them people to do that. They they finna give you niggas a, a, a implantable micro, microchip, man. That's the sin they finna make you commit. You know, and that juice. That's all they talking about. Juice and, and, and chips, man. <laughs> Snack time. Happy, she added. Well, you may have nothing, but I'm pretty sure you won't be happy because wealth never disappears. It merely shifts location. Yeah, and that's all wealth does. It just shifts. And wealth, the wealth is finna be soon transferred to us. Let me get that real quick.
this Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 8. They say, because of unrighteous dealing, injuries and riches got by deceit. And these riches got by deceit. This is what they doing. These are riches got by deceit because they drain in the monetary. They already them stole all the gold and things like that. Now they finna drain everybody for everything that they have, man. You know? And give them a CBDC where they can be totally controlled. If, if you don't act right, guess what? We just gonna take it off your own CBDC. We gonna take it out. It's, we can, hey, <laughs> we ain't gotta worry about you not paying your, your debts now. But we can just take it out. We can just cut you off. And that's what Esau want, you know? It say because of unrighteous dealing, injuries and riches got by deceit, the kingdom shall be translated from one people into another. And the kingdom insists of the riches and all these different things. You know? Let me get one more pre precept. And I'm looking at these precepts, so that's why I'll be taking me for a minute. Try to get it, maybe. I'm gonna let the video play. If you don't own it, somebody else owns it. And as we all know, then you're Yeah, and, and the things that you paying on, your car note, apartments, uh mortgages, you don't own these things, man. This this stuff belongs to the bank. If you have a mortgage with somebody, it belongs to the bank. This stuff don't belong to none of us, man. You know, you paying uh, uh taxes on some shit, land tax. You know, all these tax and shit you got to pay on something that's supposed to be yours. It ain't yours, man. Because you wouldn't be getting taxed for what's yours. You know? Renting everything. The ugly truth no one wants you to see is that the central bank has lost control. And at the same time, the U.S. economy is grinding to a halt. It's only a matter of time before stock markets collapse under the weight of their lofty expectations and record valuations. And you can be sure that your bank will collapse at the sight of a financial crisis and the system will not be able to cover any catastrophic fall of any United States bank. Whenever you hear a central banker or a politician say something won't happen, you can almost be certain it will happen, and probably soon. It's like the old saying, believe nothing until it has been officially denied. Most people have no idea what really happens when the banking system collapses, let alone how to prepare. But as we get closer to a widespread banking collapse, Choosing where to put your money is crucial to ensure it doesn't get caught in the crosshairs. A better option for you would be to close your U.S. bank account and look elsewhere. The clock is ticking, the stakes are too high, and if you don't act fast, you risk losing everything. Thank you for watching. Have you heard of the life insurance and I can't find a precept, but it's all good. That's pretty much the point. You know, brothers got precepts. Drop them in the comment board. Lord, with this edifying, I want to end it. Give it all. I don't know if you how old by her son, how was shy by her son, if I could die. Double on us for the apostles and the elders, a great meal, stone, rule, web, and great example to his younger brothers in the truth and peace and blessings to the hopeful lit. Shalom, Kwame, Ashala, Baba, Shalom.